by your presence alone. <laughs> your presence alone. Hey, 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 hey. I see you all joining on Periscope. I'm so glad you are with me. I hope you have had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I am coming to you live with a fresh word from our Lord. And I just want to sing, I just want to sing one more time, okay? Just come on, come on, join me. <laughs> As you all are joining in, tonight we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, the Holy Spirit has called me to open up the line uh, via our phone for sewers in particular, okay? And so we'll be doing the live for everyone. Everyone go ahead and participate. Keep commenting as the Lord wills, as you will. And then if you are a sower, you have been invited already to join us on Google Hangouts. And so we'll be dialing in very soon. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and start, uh, start the meeting now. So if you have the call details, you'll be able to access right now. Right now. Okay, come on, let's sing. And then we're gonna get into the word. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come from this place and fill the atmos. Your glory, God, is what hearts long to be overcome by your presence alone. Your presence alone. There is something so special about singing praises to our Lord. Uh, if you have not done so in a while, I invite you, go ahead and do that thing. Sing praises, sing praises, sing praises. And so uh, the Holy Spirit wants me to dive right into this. Here's the thing. If you have said something as a result of you being highly frustrated with the word that was seated in your heart by someone else, like an, like an offensive word, the Holy Spirit is calling you to let that word, that negative word, die within you. Okay? Die within you. And so, oh, hey, I see some of you all are joining here. Welcome, welcome. So here's the thing, if you, if you are dealing with an angry word, someone says something to you, and I know that this is, in addition to the Holy Spirit telling me this word, and I was clear of where he pointed me to, he told me to turn to page 632 in my Catholic Bible, but this is also something that I had dealt with this weekend. Like someone says something and something came up again, it wasn't hard, it wasn't, wasn't anything, but you know how something just kind of rubs you the wrong way, and then you just want to say something. And so the Holy Spirit followed up with me and he pointed me to the word for us all. And the Bible tells us in Sirach, this is chapter 19, Sirach, uh, and that, not Sirach, I'm talking about, uh, I'm sorry, Sirach, S-I-R-A-C-H. And this is one of the hidden books of the Bible. This is chapter 19. We are starting in verse 8. Look at what it says. Welcome, welcome to uh, who's on the line uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let me know who's there. I'll be dialing in and then we'll be doing um, uh, so everyone can hear you. I'm going to be putting everyone on speaker, okay? Uh, we're going to be talking one at a time on the uh, Google Hangouts. So if you're not sewing, the Holy Spirit just wants to invite you. Go ahead and sew. Uh, become a part of this new channel. Of course, not just for the channel. Honor and serve our Lord uh, through your seed, through your obedience, through your presence uh, here with us. So again, if there's a word, oh, I can I can hear you already. Who's on the line? You there? Okay, stay right there. Hold on, I can hear you. <laughs> I can hear a little bit. If you've got offense on the inside and you let it die, and this is why. It says, for he who hears it will hold it against you and in time become your enemy. Now, this is for a previous scripture. And then... Verse 9, it says, get ready. Let anything you hear die within you. Now, we're adding, you know, a little context. Anything you hear that is negative to you. It says, be assured it will not make you burst. So this is a problem that so many people have. 
when you hear something that makes you angry and, and, and we call it pop off, what happen, what's happening is the Holy Spirit is calling us to understand that this is in the Bible. And God is saying that if you let that, that word, uh, if he, it says a foolish person lets a negative word seed on the inside of them and then gives birth to it with, with anger, with their mouth, with, with uh, offensive words in return. And so God is calling us to not be a fool. When you hear a wrong word, you got to be wise. It's saying that a wise person lets that negative word on the inside of them die. So you kill it with your mouth. You, you, you don't let that, that word impregnate you and cause you to have a wrong seed, a wrong baby, a wrong harvest, a wrong future based on what's coming outside of your mouth after that was impregnated on the inside of you. Look at what it says. It says, when a fool hears something, we're going to say something negative, he is in labor like a woman, like a woman giving birth to a child, like a woman giving birth to a child, like an arrow lodged in a man's thigh is gossip in the breast of a fool. Let's continue. Admonish your friend that he may not have done it. And if he did, that he may not do it again. So saying warn, admonish, when you look in the dictionary, that's a word for warn. Okay? So that means don't get angry. Don't rebuke. Don't cut your friend off is what the Bible was saying. Some of you all, God is trying to mend relationships and keep, keep you from cutting uh, relationships that are supposed to be in your future. Trying to stop them from leaving your life. Hey, Cyrus, welcome. Hey, everyone on Periscope. It's saying warn your friend. Don't cut your friend off if there was a word on the inside of you. It says admonish your friend. He may not have done it. And if he did, he may not do it again. So, yes, yeah, someone might have stepped out of line. Someone might have offended you. But the Bible is saying that he or she may not do it again. So just give them a warning. Then it says, admonish your neighbor. So now we're going from the friend realm to the neighbor realm. And then it says, he may not have said it. And if he did, he may not say it again. So again, God is trying to keep these relationships intact. Then it says, admonish your friend again. Often it may be slander. So some of you have been dealing with potentially a friend that has slandered you. That has, and you, uh, you may know slander means, many of you know, um, and I just want to be clear. Uh, if, in case you haven't heard it or haven't heard it in a while, but slander is essentially when someone has used your word and kind of like de defamed you. So said a negative word against you and then is all of a sudden causing your reputation to be uh, attacked, uh, to have some type of damage or harm. And so the Lord is dealing with this on tonight. It says warn or admonish your, admonish your friend. Often it may be slander. Every story you must not believe. Then too, a man can slip and not mean it. So the person that you were dealing with, Holy Spirit is saying, they might have had a baby, a wrong seed of a word that you, you said on the inside of them, and then they gave birth to it, chose the foolish route. So you might have given them a wrong baby, a wrong word, and they reacted wrong, but God is trying to stop the cycle. Otherwise, we'll all just keep having these babies of wrong words. And then it's turmoil. And then it's, it's, it's anger. And then people, people distance themselves from the Lord. Because for some of you, these people were experiencing God through you. And you may have even been experiencing God, a level of God through them. They may have been assigned to you for a specific purpose. And so, if that relationship is not mended, if you do not admonish your friend, your neighbor warn them to say hey bro or hey 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 girl <laughs> like this is not okay like I, you know i know i know that you have a level of respect for me i know that you have a level of love for me but what you did i realized that the lord is telling me it might have just been a wrong baby that was birthed through a word that you heard but i'm gonna warn you this time this can't happen again it's okay to give the warning god is trying to get us out of the realm of just dismissal don't dismiss if the Lord is not calling you to dismiss. And I know because I have had to grow out of the level of dismissal. Just, I'm done. 
boom i didn't like that okay yeah this person can't be in my circle this person something something they're not quite ready they're not quite right the lord is growing people every single day and here's the thing the lord is using you to grow them as well know your place know your role in their life give them a second chance after the warning and so where am I getting this all? This breakage? This is all in the Bible as well. It says admonish your neighbor before you break with him. Glory. You said there are friendships that aren't meant to be mended, right? Yes, absolutely. Those ones where the warning just did not suffice. Where the warning turned into having to give another warning. And then all of a sudden being like, hey, like we talked about this. Hey, I'll let you know that I, that didn't make me feel too good. That that didn't. That's not how the Lord would treat me. That's not how the Holy Spirit has built my atmosphere up to allow and welcome that. Now, and, and again, there are some things that are way off base and you'll have to let go the first time. But you'll know those relationships that the Lord is referring to, those relationships that are borderline like, do I want to give this, sec this person a second chance or not, where you're already questioning whether or not this person deserves a second chance. And God is wanting to say that if it's in your heart to give the second chance, God is backing you to do it. Okay? Let me say that again. If it's in your heart to give the person a second chance, right now, right? if this is something you're currently going through, if this is something you're currently thinking about, I would say God is letting me know in the last six months. Give them, give them a second chance. Get in the space of welcoming and forgiving. Okay? And so, this is true wisdom is what the Lord is saying. A fool dismisses prematurely. A fool gives birth to evil after hearing a wrong word. A fool lets gossip, gossip slip through their mouth. And all of a sudden, these evil truths are going from one person to the next. This is foolish behavior. The Lord is calling you to operate in wisdom, which is patience, which is control over your own mind, over your own womb, over, what's allow over what you're allowing to, to be on the inside of you and grow on the inside of you, to kill anger and frustration with these biblical wisdom jewels. To kill it. Meaning, I forgive this person. I see the good in what they did and what they were trying to do. I saw the bad, but you know what? I'm going to warn them on the bad. It wasn't at the level of dismissal. This is at the level of, of warning. What the Holy Spirit is letting me know right now is that this, this lets the river flow again. This, this lets the life they have in your life to flow again. The life that they're imparting you to flow again. The operation flow again is what the Holy Spirit is saying. The word operation. The flow. He's, try, he's trying to, to ensure that this, this river, this, this flow of life, this, this relationship is not cut off unnecessarily. Okay? And so, what indicator should you be looking for? What does it look like? What was the appearance of what happened? What was the appearance? One of the things that I do when I'm thinking about whether or not I should disconnect, whether or not I should be angry, what, what's going on, it's always about what's the intention? Like, what, is it, what does it appear the intention is behind this person's actions, motives? Oftentimes, what I find is that it's not that their intention is wrong against me. It's really them projecting something that's going on with them. It, it's really their own insecurity, their, their own issue that you may be called to help them with. So it may not have even been that they were trying to hurt you. It was just they were operating at the level in which they were feeling. And, and as a result of them feeling like that, it led to specific thoughts and specific actions. But it was all, it was really about them. And so when we elevate ourselves above the actions of other people, 
And we say, all right, what, what is this really? And if we can identify the fact that, yes, they might have made the mistake, but it was mostly about their level of maturity. And if you see that they can grow, if you see that it, it wasn't really an intention to really truly harm you, like that's a deal breaker to me. Like if I find that somebody has it, like set out to harm me, but that's their 100% intention, absolutely not. No way you cannot be in my life. But the Lord is saying that 90% of the time is really not that. 90% 90, 90 of the time, someone's not really trying to harm you. And if it, God is saying, if it does get to that level, like we're to a point where they are literally trying to, to, to really bring you down, it's oftentimes because you did not heed their warnings. Their warnings. This admonishment that the Lord is talking about. Like you kept doing something that caused whatever was on the inside of them to grow and to grow and to grow. Whereas if they were not operating in wisdom, and if they did not distance themselves from your, your wrong words, then they birthed the wrong baby against you. This does not happen all the time. Oh, hey, welcome, Vigilant. Good to see you. Welcome back. As, as a matter of fact, every time the Lord plants you in my mind, on a Sunday in particular, you, you, uh, you end up on the line. You end up coming. Because uh, I had thought about that today. I was like, wow, we haven't seen Vigilant in about a couple weeks. And there you are. I thought that today. Glory to God. And so, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is, this, this birthing wrong things and letting these wrong seeds. God is saying that this is wickedness. This, this, this is wickedness. This is not wisdom. You said oftentimes I come across the, hey Cyrus, are you on the line? Because I'm about to open up the, let's open up the calls right now. Let's do it. All right, hold on. I'm coming. I'm excited. This is going to be the first time that we do this live. Now, th this is new, so. Oh, put the phone right here. Hold on. Let me go get the phone. <laughs> Wickedness and not wisdom. So the question is, Cyrus, Cyrus, check your email. I want I want you to tell us what's on your heart. I want you to tell us by phone if you don't mind, if you're willing. Okay. Be patient here. This is this is the debut. <laughs> I'm so happy that we're doing this. Glory to God. But first, let me share this on Facebook. Um, let me put on some music for you all for Alexa while I do this for like 60 seconds. Alexa, play instrumental music. Here's a station for instrumental music. Just Beats on Amazon Music. Glory. Cyrus, make sure you get on the line.
I'll use the LOL next time. I'm still coming on. Testing, testing. Hey everyone, is anyone there? I see two other people on the line. I'm here. Okay, hold on. Okay, you there? I'm here. Okay, put your phone on speaker. Put your computer on speaker. I mean, uh, mute. Put it on mute. Hey everyone. Whoa. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Okay. Who else is on the line? Hey, Latanya. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey everyone. Okay. So. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try. This is our first time doing this live. So, LaTanya, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute myself. And then I'm going to let you, then I want you to say something, okay? Okay, go ahead and speak now, LaTanya. Say it again. Hello, can you hear me? Give me one second. Okay. okay. Trying to get rid of that info. Okay. Hello? Much better. I just have to get rid of my echo. So, LaTanya. This, again, this is my first time doing this, so I still have to figure out the technical part. But we're going to work with this. <laughs> In terms of forgiveness, what is the hard, hardest part about forgiveness for you? If I muted you, go ahead and put yourself back on because I'm uh, figuring out how we can avoid the uh, uh, the echo and I think it might be the muting part. LaTanya, are you still there? I am. Yes. Okay. Woo! Look, we learned it. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is stretching us. <laughs> okay. 
So if you are muted, don't worry. This is what we have to do. If you are not talking, you have to mute yourself so, you, so we can't hear the echo through your line, okay? Look, the Lord said we're going to do this tonight, so we're going to do this thing. We're going to learn this thing right. So as you can see, now I can talk without that, that big old echo. <laughs> and I can still hear Latanya. So I think that the echo might have been coming from uh, one of the lines that we just muted. So everyone stay right there. Um, as soon as you get ready to talk, go ahead and unmute yourself. So Latanya, are you muted right now? I am not. Okay, great. Um, and then Latanya, let me try something. Stay right there. I'm going to mute you and try to see if you can unmute yourself. See if you can unmute yourself now for us. So Latanya cannot unmute herself. Okay. Look at this lie. Let's try and show your stuff. Let me hang up and then I'm gonna, we're gonna all call back in. Okay? All right, I'm hanging and then I'm calling right back. Okay, good. Hey everyone on Periscope. We're joining our uh our sewers here on on the phone. But this is our first time, so it's going to be a little bumpy at first, but this is something brand new that the Lord wants to debut today. Okay. Hey, you there? Okay, good. All right, cool. So... Good, I'm doing it now. Hold on one second, I'm coming. I have to put in the code again. Okay, Cyrus is, Cyrus said he's gonna try to call in. getting on right now on the computer that's okay <laughs> judge eight eight nine we're gonna get this thing done <laughs> live people are on the line like what is going on today okay wait i want to use your microphone okay allow all right so now i'm joining and you can probably see me. Hold on. Oh, that's okay. Were you able to get on there? Okay. All right, I'm 
gonna try this one more time. I'm gonna try it on my phone. Can you say something, Latanya? Can you hear me? Hello? Latanya? Hello? Oh. Hello? I'm in here. Okay, great. So, uh, you're on the line now. Cyrus, let us know if you join and let us know if you have any issues. I'm not hearing any echoes. So that's a good thing. The echo could have probably come from the computer. So Latanya, um, what we were talking about was the hardest part about forgiveness and just what, what is that process like for you? Like what I was saying, I already shared, which is if the intention is wrong, then I'm not going forward. Uh, what is it for you? You said it's it's letting go. Yes, but um, when someone does something to me that and I need to forgive them, it's hard for me to forgive them because it's hard for me to let go completely. But when I wrong somebody and I know I wrong somebody, it's very easy for me to you know to go to them and ask for forgiveness. It's just hard for me to forgive when someone wrongs me, for me to forgive them. Oh, okay. So you said it's easier for you to accept forgiveness than for, you know, you to dish it out. Hi, welcome, Solitaire. We're on the line doing something brand new. Uh, it took a while. It took a little while for us to figure this thing out. The reason why we're echoing was, guys, because I, I had Google Hangouts on my phone, on my computer and the phone. So it was like, it was going crazy. Um, but it's, it's on the phone. Uh, now only <laughs> so yes so that's all right hey sometimes we need to know what's going on you know how to do the technical part of things i'm gonna do it together so um you said you tried the hangouts app but didn't work okay cyrus said that um the cyrus the details are in your email you can use the link to uh to join uh let us know what happened and you can also email me because i have the email up so um in terms of what another person would do, though, because you know how the Lord is bringing to our attention the wrong seed that's put in your heart. What would you say is like the hardest thing to forgive? For you. betrayal and so is it harder for you to forgive a man than it is to forgive a, a female because you know there are times no, it's it, it people it, I mean, uh, to me a betrayal is a betrayal period and I think that's because I'm so giving and I'm so I mean because my heart is so good and um, betrayal is like that is hard for me to, to, to forgive because I mean Communication, I mean, betrayal is like, when you betray somebody, you know, you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And, and for me, when I'm willing to help, give, or do whatever for anyone, and if for someone, especially someone that's not with a friend or close to me, to betray me, male, female, whatever, it doesn't matter. I hold it the same. That's hard. I think that's the hardest for me to forgive. Yes, I definitely understand. Um, so it doesn't, so it's pretty much equal, like man versus, man versus woman. Like you don't forgive a woman easier than what you f would forgive a man. No, it's, it's, it's the trust, it's, the, it's, it's what it is, the, 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 the betrayal. It's, it's the man, man feels like the betrayal is What about family? The Lord is pointing us to forgiving family, um, especially. Betray 
baby. To me, it's all the same. But I guess for family, um, not so much as that out. Uh, it's easier, but I tolerate more from the family. Or I, 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 I would deal with the family because I look at the big picture of the overall family and not just that one individual. Okay. I understand. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Um, and so, uh, give me one moment. Everyone else si- left the call. Cyrus is. Latan, you still there? Okay, hold on. Oh Lord, hey, let's go. Can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, now you guys say something. Speak on the line. So what I've decided is that I'm just going to keep the... Um, stay right there, LaTanya. What I'm going to do is just keep the phone... Uh, option. I'm not going to do the computer option. That's the takeaway. The production takeaway for today. Because <laughs> when I, I would have to do either or. And the phone is better. So Cyrus, we just tried to join you on the computer side of things. You have to use the phone in order to get on. Okay? Or I, I thought that you might have been on the computer, but it's okay. Okay. I have to get off the computer so I'm so y'all can't hear me. Okay, I'm off the computer. Can you hear me, Latanya? Can you guys hear me? I was trying to pick up Cyrus <laughs> so you can get on the line. Cyrus is here. Hey, Cyrus is here. Look at this. Latanya, did we disconnect Latanya? Okay, LaTanya, if you are still on the live, go ahead and call us back on the phone. Same call details. This is new. Hi, Cyrus. We, You know, you always hear me say, um, hey, Cyrus, or hey, Latricia, or hey, LaTanya. So this is the opportunity for you guys to hear some of the voices in, in the stories, even the testimonies from our sewers. And for people who... Uh, the Lord has been drawing closer and closer to the ministry. Um, again, you guys are seeing the whole thing fresh. This is our first time doing it. I've never done it before, so we had to do all the technical stuff. But we welcome you to this new level in our ministry, uh, which is extremely exciting. Um, so Cyrus is on the line. Um, Cyrus has been sewing since last summer, um, I believe last July, and uh, got his first ministry call. And so I got to know a whole lot about Cyrus and his life and uh, the direction of his future. And Latanya, who I'm still waiting for you to come back, Latanya, absolutely love you both. Today is Latanya's birthday, or actually yesterday. <laughs> so um, she's celebrating her birthday. And so, um, so yeah, we're just really, really excited. So Cyrus, thank you for being here. And Latanya, let us know if you are on the line. Okay, I accidentally hung up Latanya. I'm so sorry, Latanya. Uh, dial back in when you can. Um, so Latanya was saying that it is far harder for her to get family, but she could forgive friends, male or female, equally. Um, how do you feel about that, Cyrus? If you're willing, are you willing to speak? Are you good with that? <laughs> First, the question was, are you willing to be live? Because you're literally, you're broadcasting live. We can hear you. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. And so the question is, you know, the Lord is talking about forgiveness. And he's led us to the discussion of, you know, if it's easier for you to forgive friends versus family. Um, and then the other question was, what's the hardest thing for you to forgive? So either one of those questions you can tackle. But you can definitely start off with, uh, is it easier to forgive a friend than a family member? And if so, why? Or why not? Um, I, I think, I think with, with me, uh, it's, it's more, um, I think it's better to, um, forgive family than a friend. 
friends. Mm-hmm. watching here on Facebook and Periscope. Welcome. Uh, Cyrus was just telling us uh, why he feels it's important to forgive family uh, faster than it is to forgive friends if there's a difference between the two. Go ahead, Cyrus. Thank you. Um, so, uh, basically, what I think is getting lots of hearts when you were talking about um, family, forgiving family here on Periscope. I saw at least one of those purple hearts went up and then more hearts after that. Um, so I think some people are agreeing with you when it comes to uh, being faster to forgive family than potentially uh, friends. Um, you just think that I think what you're saying is you have more uh, like fa family members have less room to just up and up and go like there's a stronger connection bond things like that where they can't continue to make the mistake and make the mistake and then not be held accountable for whereas if you uh like a friend makes a mistake or something like that then it would be easier for them to disconnect and so therefore they may make the same mistakes again is that what you're saying right okay yeah, so so what would you say, um, and Jay, if you don't mind, we're going to get to you too because I want to hear from you. What is the hardest thing for you to forgive? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would say, um, uh, probably liars. Oh, liars. <laughs> liars. Yeah. Yeah, why so? The reverse psychology. <laughs> about a liar but not just a liar but someone who what what that is called is gas lighting so when a liar I love these comments on here for vigilant too I'm about to get to some of those um a liar that tries to make you feel like something's wrong with you for for even thinking that they are lying like that's one of the dangerous that's one of the most dangerous types of liars one of the most manipulative types of liars. And I actually, I didn't know that this type of liar existed. Um, I had experienced uh, someone who, yeah, I, I experienced that personally. Um, and then I started researching it later on, like not immediately, but I started researching that type of personality. And so what the Lord was revealing to me was that that's a, that's a deeply manipulative spirit. And Vigilant is uh, on Periscope talking about the fact that um, it's wicked. And that's what we were talking about in Sirach. Uh, excuse me, Sirach. I keep pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, we were in chapter 19. Um, wickedness. And so be very careful, man of God, woman of God, dealing with people who are uh, gaslighting you. Research it. Look it up. Gaslighting. 
um, trying to put a haze around your focus, trying to make you not see what's already apparent. And that's that's a that's a wicked uh, spirit. That's very real, um, and it's a high level of lot. It's a high level of lying, is what God is saying. Because there are there's a low level lie, like and w- and what we often call that. I don't know why we call it this, but it's a white lie. And then there, 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 and when, you know, when you get higher and higher and higher, it's a lie that's not just a lie, but it's a lie that's meant to, to, de- to deceive you in a way of you thinking that something's not real, which makes you think you're crazy. That's, it's, it's really, really deep. Um, and oftentimes we see that in relationships, like, uh, personal relationships. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. That's real, that's real deep. And Cyrus, stay right there because, um, we're going to want to hear from you again. Um, if, anybody, if Latanya, if you are on per, Periscope or Facebook, come on, join us back on the line. I'm sorry we got uh, accidentally disconnected. Um, I was trying to see how we could get Cyrus on and, and accidentally uh, messed it up a little bit. Um, so, yes. Jay. How are you, Jay? Hey. hey. Now, here's the thing. I take, I, um, not text, I, I emailed uh, all of our sewers at like, the Lord let me do it at like 12.30. And I was like, we're going on and, and live in one hour. Here goes the call details. The Lord has called us to do this today exclusively for sewers. Let's do this. And some of them were up. They got the email and they're on the line right now. So you get a chance to hear uh, some of the people that you see commenting and some of the people where I'm calling their names. I'm like saying, I'm saying, hey, I'm prophesying live. They're here. And so you all have such uh, valuable points of views and rich um uh, rich words to share. What about you, Jay? What stands out to you from what we've been talking about so far? I'm, I'm going to agree with what the man of God is saying as far as the liar goes. Um, but in addition to that, I would say a person that's untrustworthy. Untrustworthy. It's, mm-hmm. it's challenging to, to forgive a person like that. And so what does untrustworthy I mean, somebody like, that's, like, not loyal. <clears throat> not loyal. Where they broke trust, maybe through a lie. Mm-hmm. Yes, glory to God. I'm, um, I'm listening to you, and then I'm also, someone on here, uh, Vigilant, has researched the word gaslighting, and he was letting us know, he was following up on that. Now, um, you were saying untrustworthy. Yes, of, of course, I 100%. Oh, she, oh, Latanya got back to us, everyone. Stay right there, Jay. She said her, her phone died. She's trying to reconnect. <laughs> She's trying to connect with her computer, okay? It's saying you have to join me in. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll be looking at that. So, untrustworthiness. Okay, how... We understand definitely what untrustworthiness is. Like, you know, you can't really... Um, and when you think of the word trust, of course, is like... Um, I'm trying to think of another word for trust without using the word trust. Um, feel secure. <laughs> And feel like the person is dependable. What, how? Ha- Tell us more. Like, how has that shown up? And we don't have to be too specific, but how does how has that shown up in your life? And how have you dealt with that? Well, really, like I guess that's connected. When I say trust, it actually is connected to like somebody like deliberately lying. So you know, if somebody lies to you, and you feel like you know you can't trust what the next set of words are going to be. So you just kind of. I mean, I just, I kind of just pick and choose what to believe. Pick and choose what to believe. And that can be very hard for the thread of the relationship is what I, what I hear the Holy Spirit saying. Exactly. If you, yeah. If you're having, like, if you're dealing with someone and you know that they've lied and all of a sudden you got to pick and choose what you, like, you, God is saying you have to use too much spiritual effort to discern. Whether or not you can trust what's going, and that and that's what what God is saying here. That's when spiritual fatigue starts to happen in relationships, and then that's when the dis, a lot of the disconnection happens. And so, tell us more, Jay. Do you has those has that type of relationship lasted long? Has it? Have you been able to to carry it forward? How has that looked for you? I mean, I kind of just distance myself. You said you distance yourself? Yes, I just kind of distance myself. Because you're talking about family members. 
I kind of got the end of what y'all was talking about when I came. Yes. Um, we were talking about family members and then also uh, we were talking about friends as well. So it's however however you wanted oh. to uh, talk about it. Yep, look at Vigilant. He said too much too much spiritual effort to discern causes the angel of the Lord to be commissioned. Glory. Yes, to, spiritual effort. So trustworthiness puts people in, in ties at rest with one another. And when you're at rest... There is life. There's more life that can enter into the relationship. And the Lord pointed us to a scripture here in Proverbs. We're in chapter 13, verse 12. The Lord is saying, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a wish fulfilled is a tree of life. And so if you are honest in your relationships or when you're dealing with honest people, this is, this is a wish fulfilled. Because we all wish that we had people in our lives that we didn't have to warn. Like the top of the world where God was talking about admonish your friend, admonish your neighbor. We don't have to warn. We don't have to go back and forth um, and try to mend relationships. Relationships that don't like call a need that the Lord is wanting me to say is a wish fulfilled, which is a tree of life. But if we are not getting this fulfilled, this is making what God is calling the heart sick. So woman of God, man of God, God is asking you, where is your heart sick? Have you given the warning? Or are you con just continually allowing yourself to birth a wrong seed? Are you birthing a baby? God is saying that that's a foolish thing to do. If you haven't given the, the notification, if you put, haven't put someone on notice how to handle you, then the Lord is saying that that's what you need to do. And after that, then you need to distance yourself because God does not want your heart sick. Glory to God. And so... Um, what I want to say is this, what, what was done, if you're willing to share one of the things that was done that made you or someone you know suffer the most with regard to these wrong seeds being planted in our heart, it could be lies, it could be all sorts of things like Different people respond differently to different things. And so what what was it for you that made you suffer the most? Or or someone that you may know. And this is for anybody on the line. So was it harder for you to do the work to sift through what was right or what was true and what was not true or was it harder for you to just let go? to say right now that's the reason why a lot of people just want to disconnect right away because it's like you said it's for many people easier to just let go than to do the work is that what you're saying to try to sustain the relationship yeah that's that's true that's deep the Lord but the Lord is wanted me to say that like that hurts his heart at times though because there are relationships that he wants to keep intact 
And so when we're hurt in the moment, it's not oftentimes the right time to decide whether or not we are to stay or, or we are to go. God is calling us to first get rid of the wrong seed. Kill, kill the wrong seed in our heart first and then decide. And once that wrong seed... I receive that. You, you receive that, Jay? Glory, glory. Glory. And I love the fact that... Normally, I'll give the person, I think... It's harder for me to let go because I, I actually give that warning before and I'll let the person know how I feel about, you know, about the act. And then I realize that it's, you know, it becomes a, I mean, it's like a normal behavior. So at that point, the hardened part for me is what, you know, having to let go. Yes. I hear you, Jay. I'm, I'm looking, I'm listening to you and then we're looking, uh, people are enjoying our scope. Uh, so you all are adding value to other people's lives and what you're sharing. And Jay, I just have to say for everyone, and Cyrus, Cyrus, when you were telling your story and how you felt that really, it really feels good to me to hear both of you. And Jay, when you said, I received that, I think it, it gave us all the chills because um, that's what the Lord is saying. And there's going to be, there are other people I'm sure that feel the same way. Like we really received that. But as you were saying, it's very hard. To sift through. Thank you, Cyrus, for coining that. Sifting through the truth and, and the and, and the and the dishonesty. Right. So, Jay, can you continue what you were saying? I, I didn't catch what you said. I was saying, can you um can you finish what you were saying before we kind of uh, welcome the people here who were commenting on Periscope? Can you finish that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, you did already? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, we ain't missed nothing, did we? <laughs> no, that was it. So, hold on, I like the... Okay. Have you felt in your life that you were a little, like, too naive? And what would, what was the turning point for you? Because the Bible tells us that the simple believe everything. But the wise do not. So, like, what was it that happened in your life? Or what did you realize in your heart for you to go through the stage? If you ever were in that simple place where you believed everything. And then all of a sudden you had this frame of mind where you just didn't believe anymore. I just saw you pop on to uh, somebody popped on a Facebook. Make sure you're only on one at a time. Thank you. Yep. Join one at a time. Yep. Either the broadcast or the phone. That's what we learned today live. <laughs> so Latanya, if you're watching, um, I was trying to email you back. Um, I have to either stick with the phone or the computer. So the phone is working. So you can join us by phone with those same credentials. But I think you said your phone had died. So let us know when your phone picks up, picks back up. Jay, are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay. All right. Um, Cyrus. Yes. Wiser, and, and, and uh, therefore, they, 
Yes. I love that. It's like for the last, um, since probably like the last uh, 12 years, I haven't been, you know, letting them uh, fool me now. So I see signs, signs that they're, um, you know, doing those certain things. That's when I cut it off. <laughs> yes. So would you say that you're more sensitive though now because you've been through so much and you may not see things for what it is? Like, do you have a, a darkened eye on certain things now? Or would you say that you've been able to sustain a clear eye to people's behaviors and what they say? Um, I think I'm more, more, more um, clear. But I had to go through uh, a certain time that, that, that I needed to, um, uh, For God to forgive you, you have to forgive them. Glory. Right. So that was the hardest part. Um, second part is that um, that um, see that they 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 you know they you know do what they do. Uh, God loves them too. God loves them too. Um, Glory. forgiving people was the fact that they could do the damage and do the harm and he would be impregnated with these wrong seeds that the Lord had been talking about earlier in the broadcast. But then, since they have access to our Lord and Savior, they can be forgiven by God even though he himself he himself haven't, has not done the forgiving on his own heart. Um, and here's where the Lord pointed us to before you had said that and it, and it connects perfectly. It says, strong is their avenger so this is the lord avenging you it says strong is their avenger whose name is the lord of hosts he will defend their cause with success and give rest to the earth and you are in the earth you are of the of the earth so god is giving rest to you it says but unrest to those who live in Babylon, which is also known as sin. Babylon is 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 uh, synonymous with evil, sin nature, uh, and things of that uh, caliber. So what the Lord is saying is, yes, that person has access to forgiveness. And yes, the Lord knows that you still have a wounded heart. But the Lord is still going to avenge you. The Lord is still going to protect you. And that person will still have to endure something as a response for what they put out because we know that as soon as we take action there is a reaction there there's there's something there's something that comes back to us and i'm going to turn it back up in just a bit anytime and this this goes back to about 20 ministry broadcasts ago where the lord was teaching us uh in the realm of mind power that as soon as we do something, there is a consequence for it. And yes, once we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, he is, he can cancel the consequence. You said I'm back, glory. Welcome back. 
the Lord can cancel a consequence on another person's behalf. And this is what Cyrus is talking about. This is what's making him frustrated. Like you have access to Jesus and that, that access can cause you to not have to go through the moon that you put me through. But the Lord is saying he's here to avenge you. He's here to defend your cause. So what I believe, what I believe and what the Lord is allowing me to say is that you got to know that person may not go through exactly what you went through and what they put you through. But the Lord defending you means that they will learn their lesson in some way or another. They are going to learn their lesson. So you do not have to defend yourself necessarily. You can give the person a warning. You, you know, you can remove yourself. But the realm of defense on, in the spirit has a lot to do with what the Lord is already equipped to do for you. This is what it means to have security, but not necessarily control. Because you can't control what happens to the other person. But you can control what you do and believing that your security comes from the Lord. And the Lord is wanting me to say right now, the security of the health of your heart after they did the wrong. The Lord is giving you security. The Lord is giving you security. Glory to God and rest is what he's saying. And so... Glory to God. What what would be one of the uh, worst words anyone has said, if you're willing to share, against you, someone you know, that just, you said, glory to God, vigilant, thank you, that just cut, like, or potentially, it may not even been said, but what are the swords? That you may have even said in someone's heart. Now that I know there are a few levels to that, but the Lord is pointing me to the word sword. And in the word sword is word, if you just take the S out. And a lot of times, and even what God was saying earlier was these wrong seeds are from words. So what was said that maybe hurt you? This could be for anybody on the line. they hated you you shared that and so if you didn't hear Cyrus clearly he was saying that one of the worst swords or words that was ever said to him that caused a wrong seed to to enter him which caused feelings of hurt um but he didn't tell us if he birthed that wrong seed by reacting improperly by reacting wrongly um what did you what you do Oh, okay. Good. So God is saying here in the Bible that that was the right thing to do. That was the wise thing to do. And so, um, turn, turn me down on the live because I think I can hear me on the live. 
on Facebook or Periscope. Turn me down there. Cyrus. Turn me down on Facebook or Periscope, whichever one, if y'all can hear me. <laughs> um, the Lord tells us, and Jay got back to us. Uh, she said, thanks for the opportunity to share. She couldn't hear clearly, and the line kept breaking up while while the man of God was talking. So she's on the line still with us. She, she's, here on Paris, uh, she's here on Facebook. So um, you know what the Lord tells us about that, what Cyrus is saying right now? There's a spirit of the Lord that convicts other people and it causes sometimes the worst to come out of them. If they have a demon on the inside of them, like the presence of Jesus on the inside of you could cause a demonic spirit to rise up in another person. And so, like, for example, if you are dealing with a special type of anointing or a special oil on your life, or if you've been blessed, the Lord has been showing out in your life. Uh, and I'm, I'm about to read that vigilant. The Lord has been showing out in your life, or there's a certain light, there's a certain protection, something. If that person's spirit is not fully upright, like if they are being tormented by demons on any of the levels that we talked about. We talked about influence. We talked about, oh, this was over the summer. We were talking about demonic influence, uh, tormenting, and then total control, like a possession. Those are the three, three levels of demonic um influence demonic activity in our lives and then uh, about two broadcasts ago we were talking about the 17 demonic spirits those can start to flare up <laughs> in other people when they feel or see the presence or activity of god in your life so god is wanting to say that to heal you whoever whoever's on the line that may have dealt with that and oftentimes people do deal with that they may not hear the words, I hate you, like Cyrus said he did. He literally heard somebody say, glory to God, uh, Jay said, agree. Glory to God, love shown, yes. Glory to God. So, uh, Vigilant here is commenting. Uh, Vigilant, let me, let me see what you're saying. You said words after, after I will love you faithfully, esteeming, graduating, and attorney. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on. Vigilant is saying something deep on here. <laughs> um, let me finish this last sentence. E evil can start to show up. Okay. Jay said agreed here. Uh, Vigilance sharing his testimony. And so thank you for sharing that, Cyrus. Stay right there. I think what Vigilant is on here on Periscope saying is uh, he's, I believe, dealt with that and someone switched. So I think he said he was giving loving words and then all of a sudden who he was dealing with was receiving it. But then all of a sudden felt unsafe. But all he was doing was, I believe what he's saying is offering love. So I believe he's saying a demonic spirit could be inconsistency in a person's response to your consistent behavior. Okay, I believe that's what you're saying. And so, uh, Cyrus, uh, we're turning you uh, back up here. And again, I know I know it's late, y'all, but if you're a sower, you got an email. So go ahead and you can join our call. We're going to be doing this. You said correct? Okay, good. Okay, I thought I read that correctly, Vigilant. You know, sometimes your language, you, 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 you use a lot of symbolic language. So you got to really <laughs> be able to discern. <laughs> what vigilant is saying uh on here yes okay yes yeah, someone else blessed blessed a hood <laughs> wait somebody's username is blessed a hood celebrity glory to god you a hood celebrity <laughs> okay hey, hey you can be a hood celebrity if you want to shoot it's all right <laughs> glory to you giving honor and praise to our lord that's all right <laughs> on Periscope, you said yes I he said yes I am. He a blessed, blessed a hood celebrity. Yes, glory. <laughs> mm, thank 
Thank you, Vigilant. You you summarized it. Vigilant said, Rock makes a person who is after God's love feel no love from people inside of God. Glory, glory, glory. And so I you know what I really like about Vigilant's statement here? <laughs> look, 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 bless bless God some light. He be putting this public service announcement out there like, look, I'm looking for I'm looking for a wife. <laughs> Bless, go ahead, stick around the ministry. You know, you, you never know. The, the presence of the Lord can put a special oil on you as you go out into the world and, and attract yourself a godly woman. Glory to God. And so, um, you said betray undeserved by force. Okay, here's the thing. This is what I like about what Vigilance said. There are people who uh, demonstrate a level of torment and bitterness. And this could just be from a wrong seed still living on the inside of them, just saying rooted in our word, the word of the Holy Spirit on tonight. If they haven't killed that wrong seed on the inside of them, where it will cause them to not be able to receive love from a godly person, like the love of God. And what I always like to say when I pray for people in their relationships, I always say, I really hope that you find someone that can be Jesus in your life. Jesus in your life, like the hands and feet and presence, the physical body that Jesus would use to pour into your life. Now, if a person, if you are doing your part and you're really being that for a person, and if a person cannot receive it, that is demonic torment. There's there's a level of demonic influence that's blocking that person from receiving what you have to offer. Um, Cyrus, would you say you ever you've ever dealt with anything like that? Again. Have you ever dealt with anything like that? God is saying that's being captured by the enemy. Their heart is captured by the enemy, so the so God can't capture their heart, uh, and you you wouldn't be able to capture it either because it's already in wrong hands unless they this permit person, themselves to be free. This person, this person, this person that I'm saying that, um, you know, didn't believe in God. Hmm. Understanding that one, Cyrus. So you were saying someone couldn't receive the love, and you believe that it was because of what again? receiving the love of God outside of a human being so of course it was hard for them potentially this is not for all atheists uh, but this person that you're referring to could not receive the love on the uh, the love that you have to offer or you or whoever had to offer uh, to them right 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 that makes sense and that could be on what you know which, whichever level so the Lord is saying that if you have faith, he can put you in a position to love, love again. He was pointing me uh, to Mark. We were in Mark chapter 10. And uh, when the blind man said, you know, Lord, heal me. And the Lord said it was because of your faith that, that you were healed. And so the interesting thing about all of this is that if we have faith, that we can truly receive love, that we can truly give love, that's what delivers us. It's like, that's what Jesus uses to deliver us, even, even in this realm of removing wrong seeds from our heart. That's what he's saying it means to kill wrong seeds. 
If that means that you have faith that the Lord will defend you, which is what we were talking about earlier, not not taking it upon yourself or the, the person to to not only receive forgiveness, but now all of a sudden you want the person to go through what, what they put you through, trusting that the Lord will defend you and that person will learn the lesson. But then also trusting God and, and submitting to him with your faith, saying, you know what, Lord, that hurt. But I have faith. That I'm going to get past this. I have faith that I can love again. I, I have faith that this won't happen to me again and I'll feel this way again. And if it does, I will have the strength to get through it. Like it's really, the solution is really our faith. And so God is not wanting us to just put a blind eye to these wrong activities. But we need to know that we need to be exercising greater degrees of faith. If we want to get to the next level in our lives, uh, especially in the area of the Lord's wanting me to say the area of love. And so, Lord, the beautiful thing about this is as we are exercising faith. We don't have to worry about if we are applying faith and wisdom, we don't have to worry about allowing those types of spirits to come back into our life and abuse us. If we're using faith and wisdom. So faith will clean, clean our heart, clean, clean any wrong seed. But faith and wisdom will be the gates that protect us from those type of influences coming in. So when I was telling you that I had experienced uh, someone who was lying and um, was trying to gaslight me, like what I what like what I had saw, or what what I was saying wasn't real, and I started researching that. Now, all of a sudden, this is encoded in my, in my DNA, in my mind, in my spirit. I know what that means. I know what that looks like. So moving forward, I'm not worried about dealing with that realm and, and, and uh, uh, without awareness. You see? So what I want to say right now is what are you willing to let go? What are you willing to kill on the inside of you and move forward so that your harvest is not blocked? What are you willing to do? Are you? Or are you still holding off from something that may have happened 10 years ago? The Lord is wanting to put an end to that because you all are sowing. You all are, are uh, up underneath the presence of God. And you may have unforgiveness or a wrong seed in your heart that may not even be disconnect, uh, be connected to a harvest that's in front of you. But these wrong seeds can be really, really a blockage to your future. And so um, what, what are you willing to do, Cyrus? I'm, I'm going to think and I'm going to talk about what I'm willing to do. <laughs> what are you willing to do to move forward? Well, I mean, this is something that I've been working on for like like a lot of um, months and years and everything. To basically um, uh, let those uh, basically um, those things that bothered me to basically visualize myself. Uh, placing those things in his hand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to let him take care of it. Yes. I mean, that's, that's, that's how, how, that's, that's how, that's how I basically, how, uh, place my cares in his hands. Yes. I was basically to, uh, visualize myself, you know, uh, Yes, yes. Glory, glory, glory. And the Lord right now is saying that that's part of his service to you. Because the Bible tells us, Jesus tells us, that he came to serve, not to be served. Now, we know that Jesus was ministered to, Jesus Jesus was definitely served, but he's telling us that, that this is his role for you. This is what he's, he's here to do for you, to defend you, to heal you, to hold your faith, to, to sort out what you cannot sort out, to be in control while providing you with security. 
That's what he's called to do. Look at this. We're in, we're in um, Mark chapter 10, verse 45. It says, for the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So let the life and the spirit of the Lord handle those activities that you yourself are not. You are you are called to, to, to do all of that dirty work. To put that person through a test, put that person through a season when they would have to deal with the baggage from what they did to you. I, I truly believe in that energy does come back to us. Like what we put out, I definitely, even though the Lord is positioned to be our savior, to be, to, to cut off the law of consequence, the law of cause and, and, and effect, the, the law of causality on our behalf. I do believe that. But I think in his standing in the middle of us and, and our and our person and their wrong action, I believe that in turn, he still gives the lesson on his terms though. So a person can do something that would be sin nature that would yield them to the adversary. But then as soon as they ch choose Jesus, I personally believe that Jesus is our savior, then gives them back a realm and a consequence that would increase the quality of their soul. It may not be on, an en on enemy's territory. It will be on Jesus' territory. On Jesus' territory. Believe that. Believe that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, the difference is the Lord is saying, wanted me to say right here is if you go out there and you're trying to fix it yourself, now all of a sudden you're setting in motion a law of causality for you to now be entangled in what was only meant for them to endure. So, for example, if a man cheats on you or if a woman cheats on you, you say, hallelujah, yes. They were the ones that even though they are saved, even though they called on Jesus for salvation, and yes, Jesus cut off the law of causality on their behalf, they're still entangled with that lesson. But as soon as you start to respond in a negative way, now you're in entanglement. So stay clean. Keep your spirit, keep your soul clean. Keep your hands clean. Keep your womb clean, man and woman of God. Of wrong seeds. Don't give birth to it. Glory. If you heed this word, what's going to happen is your road will be far straighter in the natural and in the spirit. You know that we're guilty of birthing wrong seeds at times when we act without wisdom. And oftentimes it's saying the wrong things, not being gracious with our words. So, glory to God. Glory, glory to God. Um, Cyrus, did you have uh, any, and I'm kind of opening this up, did you have any closing words, anything that you wanted to say but you didn't quite get a chance to say it, maybe because I chimed in? <laughs> um, Perfect chime. <laughs> uh, not really. I mean, I mean, you um, said everything. Uh, what things the uh, um, basically, one thing that I did was just, you know, try to find, you know, some way to, um, to rid my heart of, of, uh, of a hate, um, of your bitterness. So when I did that, I started to still feel better. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but sometimes I kind of, uh, wonder... Um, like, sometimes, sometimes when I do say that I forgive somebody, um, um, like I said, did God forgive me for forgiving them, or do I still have that, that there? So sometimes I'm not sure if, um, I've, 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 I
yeah, if you're unsure if you've forgiven somebody, you haven't really forgiven them. And right. yes, like you can remember what happened and forgive them. But yeah, if your heart's like, mm, I might not be fully over this, then no, you haven't forgiven them. And so I ask the Father to release his grace upon you in your heart. Like his spirit of grace. His spirit of mercy be upon you, be on the inside of you. Because when we're holding on and we're not forgiving, that just means that we, we are not operating at the highest level of grace and mercy on other people's lives. And so I decree and I declare, if this is you, and I decree and I declare for you, Cyrus, for everyone on the line, all of us, that the Lord supernaturally pours inside of you a full level of grace and mercy for yourself and for other people so that every single wrong seed that was planted on the inside of you by an offensive word or offensive action done by another person or a mistake that you made that you're not forgiving yourself for, I decree and I declare that you will have mercy and grace upon yourself. And you will ask the Lord to forgive you. And you will ask the Lord to give you an opportunity to demonstrate the fact that you no longer need these types of entanglements in your life. That you have fully uh, disconnected from the realm that you were once in. From the type of souls that you let enter in your life. Because there are certain souls that you that we permit that God does not permit. And I know we haven't really talked about that much. We were talking about forgiving, giving that warning. You say, yes, thank you, Lord. Jay says that here on Facebook. But the Lord is saying, yeah, we have some responsibility. Let's forgive ourselves. You said, I received that entirely. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And I do too. Always. Glory, glory, glory. We receive it. We receive it. Because here's the thing. What God is trying to birth through you is being disrupted because of wrong seeds on the inside of you. So God is saying, is his seed going to dwell in you? Is his seed going to impregnate you? Or is the adversary's seed going to impregnate you? And woman and man of God, what I come here to say is that they both should not dwell on the inside of you. They should not. They, and they cannot fully manifest on the inside of you. Because if you birth God and you birth the, the adversary, the enemy's seed, one will fight the other. And we saw that. We saw that in the Bible. One against the other. Jacob and Esau. And so, my goodness, my goodness. I just kill every wrong seed, every bad seed, every evil seed. I decree and I declare right now with my mouth. By way of the Holy Spirit. Cyrus said, I receive it. Glory, glory, glory. Now, I want to prophesy on tonight uh, while we're up, and I promise you we'll be getting to sleep very, very soon. Um, let's go into a prophetic flow. And Cyrus, I'm going to keep you live here. Uh, we can still hear you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for ushering in a brand new level. You said, good morning, queen. Oh, glory. Good to see you, Kelly. Now, that's not R. Kelly now. That's O. Kelly. I did live in Chicago. I don't know R. Kelly. <laughs> this is O. Kelly. Yes, the adversary seed. Yes, Vigilant. Thank you. Jesus Christ, Father God, Holy Spirit, lifting you higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. Again, thank you for ushering us in tonight. I just got the instruction tonight to open up. Like, I just... 
got the second instruction because God had been telling me that we were going to do it. But I just got the instruction to do the phone conferencing tonight live. Father God, we thank you for that instruction. It went beautifully. To hear from Latanya, to hear from Cyrus, to hear from Jay, thank you. And you're going to be hearing from more people who are children of God, who are sowing into their Lord, into their prophet, helping the kingdom of God be stretched into the land to touch the masses in this time. Thank you. Thank you all. Yes, there is a cost to all of this. There is a cost for growth and you are with me. You are with God and you are doing your business with God through this good soil. Glory, glory, glory. Because a good harvest comes from sowing with a good heart and in good soil. God promises us always, just like cold and heat, just like night and day, the Bible tells us that seed time, seed time and harvest will always exist. So you can always depend on your seed producing a harvest. Again, you just want the right harvest. So right now you are in the right place because the Holy Spirit is growing me and growing this ministry. And it is just, it is just such a blessing to see the miraculous power of the Lord. And thank you all who have been uh, who have been following my personal testimony, how God brought me back to, to nothing. Like <laughs> my last my last few hundred, you know, had me leave my job in Chicago, coming in a brand new job in Dallas, had me leave my home in Chicago, get a brand new home in Dallas, all before your eyes. So you can see how his miracle power and his manifestation works um, through his woman of God as I'm being obedient and as I'm I'm doing the work of the Lord. And so may that blessing be upon you. May the prophet's reward be upon you. Glory to God. May the prophet's reward be upon all of you who are sowing into our ministry. Thank you. Now, Father, prophetic word, prophetic word, prophetic word, prophetic impartation. Glory, 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 glory. There is someone who has been a messenger, who was called to be a messenger to you, but then they started the swords came out. Oh, I love those hearts. Thank you. All of a sudden, they came, they transitioned. This reminds me of what Vigilant was saying earlier. I believe that was Vigilant. How he was saying, in one sense, a person is one way, and then all of a sudden, they switch. Someone on the line has likely experienced this. The Lord is showing me. And, and the Lord is saying, they came to your gate. They came to your gate. Like you didn't go and seek them out. You say, yes, glory, vision, vision. Alexa, instrumental. Let me go ahead and put some instrumental on. Hold on. Here's a station for instrumental music. Just Beats on Amazon Music. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I put it on really low so I can hear. <sighs> Father God, lifting you higher, higher, higher. Prophetic word, prophetic word for your people on tonight. Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's reminding me to get the picture. <laughs> I believe Jesus wants to be seen during this portion. Especially, glory to God. And I believe that with this sword, your heart was chopped. It's like they came to be a messenger and all of a sudden, not only did they have swords, but they had swords that cut and broke your heart. Broke your heart. Glory, glory, glory. Jesus, 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 lifting you higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. I'm gonna turn this down. Higher, higher, higher. Higher, higher, higher. Jesus, Jesus. Mm. 
Alexa, music off. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to do the music, but I'm going to have to find the right station. Alexa, music off. I'll find the right station at some point. My bad. <laughs> Come on, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Glory. Everyone else has left the call. Thank, thank you, Cyrus. Glory, glory, glory. I personally, uh, what I'm seeing is that there were children even used. Uh, like the person was using children against you or something like that. Shredded my heart. You said he's mending it back glory. You said speaking my life. You said indeed vigilant. Oh, Cyrus. It looks like Cyrus went and joined us on Facebook. Glory, glory, glory. So it looks like what, what the person did after breaking your heart or while breaking your heart, it was like they tried to gather other people um, and I believe that these were people that are seen as uh, growing up under you or up under them or something like these are growing people because they were they came across as children. They may not be actual children. They may be like children in the spirit. But like there was a huddling of like three of them. And, he, and trying to bring them on their side or they were on his side. Already, because I'm seeing him like uh, gathering or holding uh, them. If this is a male in the spirit, it will be a male for you. It may not be a male; it may be a female. But it's this is coming across as a masculine energy. This is a man that I'm seeing. But again, they're at your gate, Father God, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, lifting you higher, 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 higher. higher. Thank you. And there was a woman and God is saying the woman of wisdom, because you know that, um, you know that Jay said, wow, glory, you know that, okay, what I saw was a tree, a green tree. God was telling me that it was wisdom and it was saying a woman. So there could have been an actual woman involved that kind of helped clear the ground, clear the atmosphere, spoke a word that one or more of you were able to access, but there was a woman right in the middle and I believe this woman represents the tree of life. And she's very strong, vigilant said yes. Very strong force, she's very calm. Again, this she represents wisdom. But she she definitely had a positive influence on whatever was going on uh, to the point where she was so strong that she calmed it down, like she calmed the storm. You said, my God sister. Oh, it was your God sister? Wow. Wow, Vigilant. So, so this clearly is resonating with Vigilant. Uh, also, it appears to uh, potentially be resonating with Jay because she said while on here, she was saying, yes, uh, remember for our prophecies, extract the word that makes sense for you, um, that, that resonates with you. Um, and for some of you, every single thing that the Lord said is going to is going to really hit home because he knows he has an appointment with you. He knows that um, that he wants to speak to you. And the Lord is showing me you with the broom. And he's saying he's asking you to clean house. You need to clean house. And so, Father, what does that mean from your perspective? The details of what that means. Wrong spirits, of course. And I'm not, I'm not to speak prematurely, so I have, to, I have to wait to get it all. What does it mean to clear house, Father, from your perspective? Clear house, clean house. Clean house. It's interesting. Because the Lord is asking you, the first thing, and I know this, this might sound, you know, but he said read, all right, read. But there was an interesting thing that I saw after that. I saw a woman 
throwing around things like in rage. And so what the Lord is saying is he wants you to get the anger out, but privately. Like he doesn't want you to birth the wrong seed towards the other person and then set in motion a negative consequence that you would then be entangled in. But he is asking you to go through the motion. What, what, oftentimes what that can mean for people is to confess to their prophet. This often happens in our one-to-one -one calls. Um, but to confess to someone that you can trust, like really get the anger out. Empty yourself is what the Lord is saying of the negative energy. That's a part of cleaning house. So if you've been someone who has not done that yet or who feels like, no, nah, I got to keep this on the inside of me. I got to kill this thing with silence. God is saying that silence is not the killer of, of, uh, of wrong seeds on the inside of you always. Uh, oftentimes it has to come out through some physical means. And you guys know we often see that in the Bible. It talks about confession. Um, some of you all may need to, to work out, like to really rid yourself of this negative energy because I see it in the spirit. But I saw rage. I saw a woman throwing like pillows, like pillows, swinging them, swinging them. That's a healthy thing to do. Do it. Privately. Glory, Father. Glory. Glory. Lifting you higher, higher. Because God is saying your hamper is full. Your hamper is full. So there's a whole lot, whoever this is for, there's a whole lot of wrong seeds inside of this space. And he's aware of it. And he's asking you to, to empty yourself of that in this manner. So be in the word and do the physical release privately without causing any negative negativity externally. And then God showed me, thank you for those hearts. God showed me you with an apron. You said, I am emptying my cup. Glory. God is saying, you are the apron. You, uh, you, not you are the apron, but you are wearing the apron. And so like you are the, the head chef in many, of, in, in many ways. So I believe God is saying that because God is saying, like, don't wait for him to empty you. That's, a, that's part of you reading. That's part of you doing the word, being filled with the faith and with the Holy Spirit. Yes. But he's saying, you're, you're the chef too. So take the action. Take the initiative. Start the process of emptying yourself. Yes, to heal up. Glory, glory, glory. See yourself as the head and not the tail of this. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord is also saying that you are a leader in very, uh, like many areas of your life. Like there's something in your life where you are leading. Some of you all may be transitioning in, in your uh, position, assignment, but God is showing me you as a leader. You're already leading. And so see yourself like that and know that he's asking you to be a leader in the spirit in terms of emptying yourself of these wrong seeds. Because there's a lot, a lot of people and activities that are behind you. And you need to be emptied of these. Because you wouldn't want to, to, to give someone else a plate. You're filled with wrong seeds, but you made the food. And all of a sudden, you're imparting to the next person wrong things to eat. Like a wrong energy. And so, yes. And so, with you being the chef. You being the imparter of the food that other people are eating, people that are close to you, people that are in your atmosphere, God is just letting you know that, that this is your role to be the head chef, to be the person that dispenses clean food. The person that dispenses clean food. And what does that mean? That means food through the words that come through your mouth, food that comes through the wisdom and the comfort that you provide others. Thank you for those hearts. Your presence is food. Just you. Just you. You. Glory. 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 Have, have you thought about it like that? Because I was wondering why God showed me you was a chef. You said exactly. Not healthy. I received that. Thank you, Father. Yes, Jay. Glory, that something? 
Because I'm like, okay, Laura, you showing me a chef's apron? You you all with a chef's apron on. <laughs> and then as he kept speaking, it all made sense. You're putting food on the table. And here's the thing that God is saying. You, oh, welcome. You said, wait, wait. You, you said first time, yes. You are putting food on the table for yourself. So you don't want to be recycling wrong energy, giving other people wrong energy, giving yourself back wrong energy. No, God is wanting to, to recycle good energy through you, onto you and onto others. Glory, glory, glory. And now it's interesting because I'm seeing a, a ship, like a... a Oh, thank you for that star and heart, Jay. I, re I received that. I really love seeing that. Thank you all. It's interesting, you guys. What I'm seeing, women and men of God, is a ship that is being pulled up by a pole. Like, the ship is being raised up. Father, why are we seeing it like that? The Lord is telling me to... Go to my Bible. Oh, glory to God. The Lord here, as I flipped over to the Bible, you all know that even when I'm on the calls, I'll flip to a word in the Bible and God will have the exact, the exact message for the person. It was so interesting. This recently happened. And it's not like you can find a word that applies to everything. No, like God is very specific. Um, God was revealing to me that the woman I was talking to was a prophet, was giving me words in the Bible and, and everything I would say, everything she was like, yep, that happened. Yep, that makes perfect sense. And oh, let me tell you this. And this was a person that at the top of the line sounded like, you know, nothing was wrong. So I had to get to my Bible because I'm like, I know there's something. So like, it was like the Bible, the Lord used the Bible to speak on her behalf. And then... She was following up based on what the Lord was saying. And it wasn't like she was withholding. I just believe it was just so new <laughs> to her uh, that that's just how it, it flowed for her. And so um, the Lord here is saying, but if I am building up again those things that I tore down, then I show myself to be a transgressor. For through the law, I died to the law that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ. Now, what stood out to me here? You said flow. Yes. What stood out to me here is the Lord is, is building you up. And so, and it's so wonderful because the Lord was talking to me about the law earlier today. If we handle each other and ourselves according to a very strict law, like uh, the Ten Commandments is the eternal law, that those things we need to obey. But if we operate under maybe not all of the 613 Mosaic laws, but if we have this, this rigid mentality towards other people that is, uh, uh, that, is, that is too overwhelming for a person to really win with you or for you to win with yourself, the Lord is saying that you are inflicting a curse upon yourself. Like, so unrealistic expectations or uh, an inability to forgive and an inability to distribute, dispense grace onto others. The Lord is saying that if you operate up under that type of rigidity, then you are putting yourself up underneath the curse. But if you operate up underneath the fact that, that Jesus himself is imparting you grace and imparting you faith, giving you an ability to cleanse yourself of wrong seeds, and you literally give yourself and other people grace, what you're doing is building yourself up rather than cursing yourself and tearing yourself and other people down. You said, amen, glory. Oh, Kelly, yes. So the Lord is wanting to invite you to the space of grace, the space of grace. And that was part of the reason why Jesus came. You said, hey, 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 teach us. Yes. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Jay. You see how the Lord speaks to us? Now, the Lord was telling me this earlier today. And at the right time, he will bring it to my remembrance. Like there are some things that like that I'll know in my mind, but the Lord will not cause to come into my remembrance while I'm on the live. It was because that's not what he wanted to say. And so I love how God works. He's asking you to operate in grace. Share the broadcast. Make sure you're sharing. Make sure you're sharing the word with people with your mouth. Uh, digitally, everything. Share, like, heart, do it. There are people that need to hear this. They need to hear this. Again, God is inviting you into a space of grace. Do not curse yourself or another person by being too rigid. That is what they did in the Old Testament. The reason why Jesus came to us, one of the primary reasons, was to take us out of that curse that rigidity, which you can put yourself back under, and to operate into a state of grace, in a state of grace. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Say that. I remove the curse off my life. I remove the curse off my life because I am operating in grace. Operating in grace. Operating in grace. And wisdom, yes. But the Lord is wanting to emphasize grace. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory. God has given me a, a, a page to go to. 438. The Lord is doing things differently today in many ways. Yes. God is asking you to abandon certain customs that you've grown familiar with. Thank you, Father. The Lord is lifting us le levels, levels, levels. Like, this is all, this is different. Like, usually in prophecy, God does not, like, call me to a page in the Bible, but he's opening, opening us up. Like, my goodness, I just appreciate that. Like, every, every broadcast is, it's always the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, but I like the way that he's doing new things. I do. The increase. The Holy Spirit, Father God, and Jesus Christ, they are always increasing to new levels. And we should too. But, the, but uh, what the Lord put me to this page for was to say, was to birth with my mouth as your prophet, as your woman of God, is this. He's asking you to get rid of certain, these rigid customs that he was just talking about. Um, I'm getting that from uh, Maccabees. I'm in chapter 6, verse 1. And contextually, there may be a whole lot of things contextually going on within a, within a passage of the Bible. But the Lord can have my mind focus in on a word or a few words. And that specifically, that, that phrase or that word is what he wants me to focus on. So I'm not thinking about at this time. Sometimes he does want me to focus on context. We talked about Judith. In the last broadcast, the whole story of Judith, that context was huge. Um, and it was a, a large part of the meat of the message. But right now, the Lord is saying, uh, it says, force the Jews to abandon their customs. And the context that he just gave us is the context that he wants, wants us to stick to. So abandon rigid customs. Operate in grace. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory. And then it's so interesting that the laws, the laws of God, we're talking about the Mosaic laws are being referred to right here. And so it's so interesting that I just flipped to a page and exactly what we were talking about just popped up and where the Lord pointed, pointed my eyes. Let me see if there's more, 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 Father, more, more, more. God is calling you to be an instructor, though. Like, because uh, to set parameters. So, like, even though you're operating in grace, even though you're admonishing, warning, you know, those, those synonyms, even though you're doing this, God is still calling you to be an instructor, to, to set grounds, to, to set uh, expectations, manage expectations, give them. Because I saw you in the spirit doing this. 
And oftentimes this is you like, you know, this can be a person teaching people like, all right, if it's going to like, we need to do this, this, this. And then the Lord is also wanting me to say, you may not be in the person's face doing this, but this is you replanning your future. Like, like I shouldn't say replanning your future, but establishing what your future is going to look like. This is, this is what I'm not going to do. This is what I'm not going to allow. This is so like. You are training yourself up in what you are going to be doing and how you're going to be operating in the future. Like now, like right now. But then God is wanting me to also say, not only are you doing that, but you are setting clear expectations for other people. And knowing in your heart that that's okay to do. It's okay for you to do that. Um, it's so funny. I, I heard somebody say something... They said an acronym for the word B I T C H. Now I would not. I'm sorry, Lord. I hope I ain't. I'm not. Look, I'm not saying that to be unholy or anything like that. But the acronym that that they gave reminded me of the fact that yes, of the fact that the acronym was being in total control of her. Now we talk about. And I, and I have to give a shout out to Ian, Ian that was not me. The Lord had me uh, uh, tune in to a program of hers. And I remember she said that. Now, we know that word is not a good word. I don't like to use it. I don't like to say it. But I did like, uh, on a level, what she was saying. Um, the Lord is, is the central controller. But the Lord is also calling us to have self-control. We can't control others. But when you set parameters and when you give people the correct way to handle you, this is you being in total control of her or him. So if you are in a place where you're you're afraid that you are being B I T C H E <laughs> in whatever way, I see all those hearts. The Lord is saying, no, there's a realm where, where he is calling you to do that. He's calling you to do that. He's calling you to set the parameters. Because if you don't, thank you for those hearts. Yeah. And, and that laugh. I saw that. Because if you don't, then you're not being in, in real control of, of your atmosphere. How people are, are handling you. He wants that for you. Being in total control of him or her. Thank you for that. Thank you. And I received that. Thank you. You said set, setting the parameters. Yes. Don't worry about it. God permits it. Oh, Jesus. And so finally, Father. You will, some of you will be in a new atmosphere, a brand new atmosphere. You said insisting, I, re I receive that, yes. Receive it, yes, glory. Thank you, Father. I saw a person walking into an atmosphere with a book in their hand. It, it felt like, it felt to me as the vision came through like the Holy Bible. Fully clothed in like holy garments. But you were charging into a new atmosphere. And so... God is saying that with him, with him in your heart, with him and his wisdom jewels in your mind, you are entering atmospheres with his spirit. And you need to know that you're carrying that strength, that he's, he's speaking to your identity. And so he's expecting you to have specific behaviors that mimic him. Yes, they may call out the demons in other people, but he's asking you to hold on to the strength that you have in your hands. Glory, Jay, I saw all those hearts. Glory, glory, glory. Someone, I saw someone on the line with all those hearts. You said to God, yes. Vigilant, you said, glory, yes. I saw you. You all, the people that God is speaking to, I saw you as an individual person, fully clothed with holy garments, with this, with the Bible in your hand charging into a new atmosphere and so do it do it do it do it do it you are not who you were 
before you got to this level of relationship with God. You are a brand new being. The Lord is closing on this. You are brand new. You have the spirit, his strength, his ability to disseminate grace and to kill every wrong seed on the inside of you before it gives birth and disrupts the harvest that's in front of you. With that said, I love you all. I look forward to coming to you again very soon. Um, and maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, we'll see how it, how it flows. But um, it's my mission to come on, if not daily, very regularly. It's all uh, based on what the Lord uh, calls, okay? And so I will likely see you all uh, tomorrow or Tuesday. All right, love y'all. Bye.